Hey everybody, welcome to today's lesson. Today we're going to be focusing on the different subatomic particles, the proton, the neutron, and the electron. Now I want to take us through just a brief um, idea of where we are now when we're talking about the atom. So first and foremost, we started with John Dalton and his atomic theory, his five postulates. We then studied J.J. Thompson and his discovery of the electron using the cathode ray tube. Okay, and we just today discussed in class Rutherford and his discovery of the nucleus of the atom. And his idea was that the uh, majority of the mass and positive charge is very, very teeny tiny compared to the overall size of our atom. And so he made two major discoveries. The idea that the nucleus is a small, dense, positively charged center, and that the uh, majority of the rest of the atom is actually empty space and is filled with electrons, okay? So before we jump in, we actually don't talk about in this course the discovery of the neutron. It's very interesting, and I think what's even cooler um, or what's coolest about it is that it was actually Douglas Chadwick who was a student studying under uh, Ernest Rutherford, and he discovers the neutron. So I will include a brief video about that um, on today's lesson. It's not mandatory to watch, but if you are interested in the discovery of the neutron, you can go ahead and watch that video. But for today, we're gonna talk a little bit about how to determine the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons using the element symbols from the periodic table. So just as a quick reminder, let's just go ahead and redefine the atom since we are talking a lot about the atom in class. So again, we defined the atom as the smallest unit of matter. Okay, smallest unit of matter. And I want to point out that we've since learned some information about it and it is electrically neutral. Okay, which we're actually going to define in just a little bit, but an atom is always considered electrically neutral. And that's going to uh, play a big role in, a, in probably a few units from now when we start to talk about what happens when they're not electrically neutral anymore. Okay, um, and let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the different um, subatomic particles. So I actually went ahead and paused there, so sorry if that looked a little glitchy. I wanted to make sure that I had uh, this image input here. So here we have a diagram of the atom. Now, this atom is actually a diagram um, which we'll talk a little bit more about with our next model of the atom, but in terms of taking a look at the actual structure and the numbers of protons, neutrons, and electrons, this model of the atom is the easiest to look at, okay? So we're gonna use this model today to talk about this. Now, I want you to notice just a couple of things, okay? Looking at this, uh, at this model, you'll notice that our nucleus, it's not really drawn to scale here. Remember, the nucleus is much smaller, but because we uh, really want you to be able to see what's inside of that, it's really spread out, okay? Now, notice that there are two types of subatomic particles found in the nucleus. We have the proton, which are the red circles, and the uh, blue circles, which are the, or I'm sorry, the blue circles are the protons, and the red circles are our neutrons. So in the data table that I've included, um, on the notes sheet. And again, if you don't use the notes sheets, I did include this data table. So let me go ahead and sketch that really quickly here. We're going to be looking at the proton, the neutron, the electron, okay? And we're going to be looking at the mass, okay, the charge, and the location of where we can find them. Now, again, if you are following along on my notes sheet, I think I just did this in a different order. I think on the notes sheet, it's proton, electron, neutron. So let me actually just, just go ahead and erase that so that I don't confuse anybody. So proton, electron, and neutron. Okay, so we already have our first answer here. We have the location of all of our different components. So let's go ahead and fill those in, okay? So we have... The, the location of our proton is in the nucleus. Okay, so it's in the nucleus. Okay, we have the location of our neutrons, which are also in the nucleus. And for terms, in terms of where we say that the electrons are located, we just say they are outside the nucleus, okay? So we have our electrons located outside of the nucleus. Okay, great. 
Now let's talk a little bit about the charge. Now remember, with J.J. Thompson's experiment, he actually told us that the charge of the electron was negative. Now to be a little bit more specific, we're going to call it a charge of negative one. Each electron carries the charge of negative one. For a proton, okay, again, we talked a little bit about this term um, today in Rutherford's experiment, but also from previous science classes, protons are positive, okay? And we say that they carry a charge of plus one. And then we have neutrons, which are just what they sound like. They are actually electrically neutral and carry a zero charge. Now let's talk about mass. This is something that is less obvious and you can't really see it from this image. But remember that during JJ Thompson's experiment, he did tell us that the electron was significantly smaller than the mass of anything else that exists out there, okay? But in terms of the proton, we like to say that the mass is one AMU or one atomic mass unit. So each proton has a mass of one AMU. Okay, neutrons also each have a mass of one AMU. Okay, electrons carry such a small mass. Now I'm saying it's about one eighteen hundredth the size of a proton. So electron masses don't really make a significant difference. So we actually say that it has approximately the mass of zero AMU, okay? So now we know all about the mass, the charge, and the location of our subatomic particles. Now, remember, I used that term electrically neutral up top, and this image actually shows us what it means to be electrically neutral. So let's go ahead and quickly define electrically neutral, okay? So when you think of the term electricity, okay, or electric, you think of charge, and that's very true here. When we're saying we're electrically neutral, that means that our charges balance, okay? Our charges balance and equal zero. So if you look at our diagram that I've included here of carbon, notice that I have six positive charges, right? Plus six, and I have six negative charges or negative six. This overall gives me an electrically neutral atom with an overall charge of zero. So electrically neutral means our protons are equal to our electrons. Okay, so now what does that mean and how can I determine from just the element symbol, if I'm not given a diagram and I can't count the protons, neutrons, and electrons, how can I determine the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons? So let's go ahead and hop to a new page of our notes. And I'm going to include here just a few more images so we can do an example together. So let me go ahead and import that image. Okay. Oops, I did not apparently save that correctly. Let's see if, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw this out then in the interest of time, okay? So you'll notice uh, if you're following along on my sheets that I've included the uh, carbon symbol from the periodic table, okay? And there's two major things that I wanna talk about here. The first of which is called the atomic number, okay? And the atomic number is located at the bottom left, this is our atomic number. And the atomic number is important because it tells us the number of protons in the atom, okay? So it's gonna tell us the number of protons we have, and we'll talk a little bit more about this, but the number of protons is what distinctively makes each atom that type of atom, right? So carbon has six protons, lithium has three protons, nitrogen has seven protons, so on and so forth, okay? Now, if we're thinking back, if I wanna determine the number of electrons, remember we just said that the atom is electrically neutral. So if the atomic number tells us the number of protons, it is also gonna tell us the number of electrons, okay? It's gonna tell us the number of protons and therefore also tell us the number of electrons. So how then do we determine the number of neutrons? Now, remember we said the mass of the atom comes specifically from the 
one AMU per proton and the one AMU per neutron. So I have here what is called my atomic mass. Okay, and my atomic mass tells us the total mass in AMU. So I want to know then, how do I determine the number of neutrons? Well, my atomic mass is the number of protons. Remember, they're each one AMU. Okay, and it's the number of neutrons, which again are each one AMU. So in order to solve for my number of uh, neutrons, I have to take my atomic mass, okay? And I have to go uh, 12 AMU and subtract the number of proton AMU that are present. Now you'll notice that there's a decimal place number here. For the purpose of this, you are going to round that number to the nearest whole number. Hence why I rounded to 12 AMU. So anything 0.5 and below round to the lower number and anything above 0.5 round up. So we have 12 AMU minus the number of proton AMU, which is six AMU, which is going to give us six neutrons, okay? On the notes sheet, I've included two more examples. I've included a phosphorus example and an example of lead or PV. For the uh, for class tomorrow, I want you guys to come prepared with the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons for each of these, and we will go over that at the beginning of class. All right, everybody, see you tomorrow.